people so today is going to be a sit down and talk video I will be doing an information vomit so as you can see from the title I will be relaying my experience in applying to a Korean university specifically for Korea University and Yonsei University by the way since Korea University and Yonsei University are like mouthfuls to say I will just be saying Korea and Yonsei respectively a lot of people ask me specific stuff both in YouTube comments and on my Instagram DMs and some people requested that I make a video on it as well so I've decided to just answer the call of the people if you haven't watched my reaction video yet I'm gonna link it up here or here but if I fail to do it that means I did not discover how to actually link a video on either one of these corners the thing about my application is that it refers to a very small demographic of people because the application process that I went through refers to only Koreans who studied abroad, who basically undertook all of their education abroad and that that's like a really really small population but for the documents I looked at the application guide for international students as well and it's basically the same but mine is a little bit more complex. I have to submit like some other additional stuff. I will not make any claims about the application process for international students because I might get something wrong since I didn't go through it myself and we don't want that. So my role here is just to give you an idea of what I submitted personally and how those documents made me pass. Keep in mind that what I did is specifically for the Spring 2021 admissions for me. I don't know if it's going to change for the Fall 2021 or the Spring 2022. So for my general notes. Alright, so when it comes to the English majors, I noticed that a lot of people asked if you can go to university in Korea without learning Korean. Um, First of all, there's something very wrong with that thought process because if you're going to university in Korea, you should learn the language but i do understand the question if you have to learn korean prior to taking a university course in korea um yes and no it depends on the major that you choose everyone who is researching about undergraduate in korea you have probably heard of the underwood international college for yonsei most people look towards yonsei because yonsei has a really good system of promoting themselves as an international college because they have a separate college that is all in english underwood international college hosts a lot of majors and that's a good point for international students but there is a common misconception okay no it's not really i can't say it's a common misconception but just from my observation not a lot of people actually look towards Korea University. Korea University does offer um, English majors. So basically in Korea there are two colleges that offer majors like you can graduate taking all English courses. So one is the Division of International Studies and the other is the Korea University Business School College of Business Administration. So if your interests aligns with uh, international studies and or business administration I do encourage you to check out Korea University as well. Now we're moving on to Korea University or Korea First, I just want to say that there is an application guide available online on the Korea homepage and it's a very very detailed application guide. They literally say everything you have to do. Make sure you check that out. To go to the Korea University website, type that okukoreaackr site and go to this whole campus and on the first tab you'll see the categories of students I was under this one, the so once you click that, you'll be presented with the application guide. So for you overseas Koreans out there who have studied abroad all their life, this one's for you. And going back, let's go to the international students tab and you'll be redirected to this page. Just click that red button there and click the degree program for international students and you'll find the application guide in English there. Okay, so that's how you go to the homepage, so look for that application guide and just read it. Now, if you're a really lazy person, and of course I want you to continue watching this video, I will be showing you a screenshot of the, docu the, the documents interview of the international students right here, and then the documents overview of the overseas Koreans right here. Now, for the moment, you guys have all been waiting for maybe my grades and the actual documents that I submitted. 
So because I applied as a 12 year overseas Korean, I had to submit all of my grades from first grade to 12th grade. So I had to go to all of the schools I attended during that time period to request for my transcript. Was not fun, so if you're an overseas Korean, <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry for you. But if you're an international student or like a three-year overseas Korean, I think, or something like that, a different category, you just have to submit your secondary or your high school grade. So that's convenient. Now I'll be showing you all of the grades that I submitted. Okay, so first here are my grade school grades. I was thriving in grade school. I was. I Wow, I mean, what did I even do? And here are my junior high school grades. So this is from 7th to 10th grade. Uh, I kind of went down. Anyway, I'm gonna say something about that later. And then these are my senior high school grades. This is 11th and 12th grade. So I put grade school, junior high school, senior high school because that's the system that we have in the Philippines. Now, for my comments about this, um, for my first to sixth grade, I was in a very small school. So that's why I was able to get like a pretty good, you know, record of grades. So I think that the institution name matters a lot because even though my grades relatively dropped during seventh to tenth grade, I was in a science high school at the time, and you know, science high schools they're known. <laughs> anyway, so. I think that the school reputation also matters, not just the grades. Because there is also a section where you can submit your school profile, which basically states the acceptance rate of your school, the number of students in your school, basically the technical objective reputation of your school. So they take that into consideration as well. So I did not show my grades to brag, guys. Even if it's like nothing to brag about really I just showed you guys like I wanted to be open about it so you guys know the kind of um, grades that I had to get accepted but I do firmly 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 believe that the grades are not a super big advantage on your application like there are so many more like, so I will be talking about my extracurricular activities now for Kurade I was given a list a table with 10 slots so I had a maximum of 10 extracurricular activities which I could submit and they ask for official certificates or tr certified true copies or any proof so you have to have a person in charge like the name and the number I I'm not sure for the international students but that was my application I didn't fill up all of the 10 because I'm not a very involved person. I will be listing down the most prominent ones that I put so you guys have an idea of what activities I did. Okay, so first is the Vajrayard Scholarship. So it's a, an academic scholarship given to like the top 50 uh, public school takers of like an entrance exam for senior high school. Second one is the director's list scholarship. So this is also an academic scholarship awarded to the top 80, either 80 or 200. Um, I'm not really sure. I don't know why there's a huge gap in my guesses like 80 and 200, but I think it's one of those. If not, then my mistake. Those two scholarships I think strengthened my application pretty well. Yeah, but I don't know how I got those scholarships either. Don't ask me. I'm not super smart. Next, I also submitted like random certificates for like research because Kurodaku is also known as like a research university. Like they have a high research output so I thought that research related stuff would be good to submit. Next is the IELTS. So it's either one, you take an English proficiency test like I did, so I took the IELTS, you can also get like the TOEFL, or two, you could request like proof from your school that you undertook your courses majorly in English. But the problem is, I thought I was gonna be able to request that because I came from a public science high school from 7th to 10th grade and we didn't necessarily have our classes in English. So I just like, oh my god, never mind, I'm just going to take the test. And I took the test without reviewing for it because I'm confident. Anyway, I got, I took the IELTS, got an 8. Amazing. So, oh, this is a big thing this next one. So I went on a student exchange program to Japan for before my last year of high school. So since I applied to an international 
college, I think it's a good indicator that I am not afraid to go to a foreign country, even though Korea is not really foreign to me, but go to a different country, like a whole other country, and I'm going to be able to adapt independently and well in that country because I have already experienced kind of studying in a foreign country. Next, um, the ACT. Uh, I was really skeptical if I was going to submit this or not because I took the ACT with like five days of review, like cram review. I'm not very, very proud of my score. I couldn't retake the ACT because it was so expensive. It was like 10k pesos. So like when I got my result, I'm like, oh my god, I'm stuck with this. So anyway, I got a 31. Not my proudest moment, but... <laughs> okay, yeah, I think those are the most prominent ones. I hope you guys got a pretty good idea of what kind of person I am, what kind of student I am. Next, uh, everything was done online, in my case, for Kurate. Uh, I don't know if it's like that every year or if it's like that just because of the pandemic but I didn't really need to mail anything during the application period but after I got admitted, I was informed that I had to get an apostille for my documents to certify that they are true and valid and then I have to submit it by February, like the documents, to the school. Now, the essay questions, so I'm not going to disclose the essay questions that I answered because I don't know if it's gonna change. Also, like, I can't find the file where I wrote all of my essays. I think I deleted it by accident because I don't like looking back at stuff that I already submitted because like I'm just going to see the mistakes that I had and then I'm going to be frustrated but I won't be able to do anything about it anyway. But actually you can access the questions like on the homepage. There is this area in the homepage where you can look at all of the documents that you have to submit. There's like a whole list of files like everything is on there and then the personal statement is also on there and they literally give you the question so you have time to prepare for it beforehand. Now, interviews. So I wasn't required to do an interview for Burabe, but I think if you're an international student, you will be. And I don't know how the interview works every year, but this year, they literally gave out the question on the homepage and you had to record a video of yourself answering that question and then you're going to upload it on their site. Right, so I think that's all for Kurode. For the process, like the full-blown process, just check out the application guide, like everything is there, it's like crazy detailed. Okay, finally, we're moving on! We're moving on to Yonsei-de. So first, um, there are application guides as well for Yonsei-de in their homepage. Now for Yonsei's homepage, just type in Yonsei University International Admissions and click the first result. You'll be guided to this page and click Undergraduate Admissions or apparently Undergraduate and you'll see this timeline and you will be able to download the application guide at the bottom of the page. And for overseas Koreans, the search is a little bit different. So. Um, I search Yonsei Dehakkyo Jaewoo Gungmin Tukpyeol Jeonghyung and get the first result and you'll see the timeline as well in the application guides and you can also select if you're a 12-year or 3-year overseas Korean. Okay, uh, yeah, that's it, <laughs> I think. I mean, it's pretty much the same. I mean, obviously I'm not gonna show my grades again because like I submitted the same thing, obviously. Yeah, but for the overseas Koreans, be careful because you have to select the right application guide. Like, if you're like me, the application guide that you're following says to Jungo, meaning elementary, middle, and high school overseas, right? Yeah, uh, what's different is, um, in my case, for Yonsei-de, there was like an optional recommendation letter, um, but for Korea-de, like, there's no option. It's not even in the list, so I didn't really need to submit a recommendation letter, but for Yonsei-de, like, the teacher had to mail it by a certain deadline. And also, Yonsei-de also has a fee, an application fee of 150,000 won. So, it's the same as Korea then. So, for the international students out there, obviously, you saw my grades and my extracurricular activities, so I hope that you got an idea of like the situation, no, the standard that I had applying to the Korean universities. Now, conclusions. I'm in the conclusion part, guys. Oh my gosh. Just a disclaimer. I have no idea how students are evaluated. Obviously, universities don't give out their application criteria. So I'm just uploading this video to help some of you all aspiring Korean university students. Everything that I said was based on personal experiences and inferences. So 
yeah don't quote me on this also actually if you apply to Korea that in UA apply after you finish your application you can actually check like the statistics I don't know if it's only for my application we could check the competition rate like how many students applied and what are the odds of getting into each college so that was pretty cool and pretty nerve-wracking anyway I think that's that if I missed anything Please just comment them down below or DM me on Instagram. Like, if you DM me on Instagram, it's like I'm 100% sure that I will see it. But guys, oh my god, don't DM me like, hello. Like, just hello. Like, I would rather you ask the question in one go. Like, hello, and then the question. Not just like, hello, because like, I am literally so terrified of internet creeps. So I don't really reply to those kind of messages. Like, if you just say hello or hi, like... Chances are, uh, I'm not gonna accept the request. So if you guys are gonna gonna ask me something on Instagram, just ask me like the question in one go. Like, so if this video helped you guys, please give it a big, big, humongous thumbs up because I spoke way too much. My mouth is dry. So I will be seeing you guys very soon. Thanks.